If you're able to identify gobble zones, then you're gonna be able to stay on turkeys consistently this spring. A gobble zone is basically an area where male turkeys, gobblers, go to gobble, strut, and just display themselves in a courtship ritual to attract females. This can also be described as a lek. On episode 225 of the Southern Outdoorsman podcast, Dr. Michael Chamberlain actually talked about the idea of these leks with turkeys. So the technical definition of a lek is an aggregation of male animals gathered to engage in competitive displays and courtship rituals with turkeys, that would be your strutting and gobbling, to entice females which are surveying prospective partners to mate with. So that's the point of all the strutting and gobbling is to entice the hens to come to them so they can mate. By the very definition of a lek or gobble zone, a turkey is wanting to be seen and heard. Those are the two criteria for it. So in hill country, like where we are right now, these leks or gobble zones usually end up being a secondary ridge point dropping down into a bottom or a high saddle where that gobbler can stand up there and he can gobble off into two different bottoms on either side of him. The reason a turkey likes to get in a spot like that, a gobbler more specifically, is because they can be heard for a long ways. They can cover a lot of ground with their voice, with their gobble. They can gobble off this side of the ridge and cover all that ground. And then they can walk 10 feet to the other side and gobble in that direction and cover all that ground. They can also be seen from both sides as well. So the gobbler can walk to this side and he can strut and he can be seen throughout that whole bottom and then he can turn around and do the same exact thing on the other side and be efficient with his movement. A gobbler will position himself on one of those ridge points that leads down into that bowl for the same reason he gets up in a high saddle. He can be seen throughout that entire bottom, multiple drainages coming down into one spot. He can be seen from any of them and he's projecting his gobble down through all those different drainages. And again, he can cover a lot more ground with his vocalizations. Because of the specific criteria that it takes to make a good gobble zone, you're gonna be able to look at maps and make a pretty effective prediction on where you think they're gonna be before you get out in the field. So behind me are some select cut pines and directly adjacent to these select cut pines is a saddle in the road where the road actually cuts through that saddle and there's gobbler tracks actually heading down the road and they stop in that saddle and he actually walked around in a circle right there and strutted for a while. You can see it in his tracks. That saddle is a really good example of where he can display and be seen by hens because he can stop at the mouth of that saddle and gobble down this big open valley. And if a hen's all the way back there at the back of that valley, she can look up and easily hear him, but also see him all the way up here. Another key point about this is where he's standing in the road right there he also has a really good vantage point. He can see all around him, and if there's any kind of danger, he can pitch off and fly down this valley, or he can turn and run into the thicker pines on the other side of the road. The same holds true for a ridge point. So if you have a really nice ridge point that's dropping over a thermal hub, especially if it has a good military crest or just a good drop into that, into that thermal hub, not a, a gentle slope, but a good nice drop, he'll stand right there on the edge of where that hill actually rounds off, and it gives him the same advantage. He can see that entire thermal hub. Anything in that thermal hub can see him. And if there's any chance of danger, if there's danger below him, he can run up and over the hill. If there's danger up on the hill behind him, he can just jump off the side of that hill and get some air under his wings and fly away to safety. So one thing that can be kind of confusing about this is if you're in hill country, there can be a lot of different points or saddles to choose from. So how do you tell if one is better than another? Personally, some things that I look for when I'm looking for, let's just say a good ridge point, is I look for a good military crest. So I want that ridge point to come out and drop very steep. I don't, I don't want a ridge point that comes out and slopes very gently down to the bottom. I want a good solid drop. So on a topo map, you're gonna be looking for where those topo lines stack very close together. You don't want a spot where there's a lot of space in between those topo lines. You want them very close together so you have a nice steep military crest coming off the top of that hill. Another thing when it comes to ridge points that you're gonna to wanna to look for is again, a nice thermal hub. So ideally that ridge point is gonna be in the vicinity of a, some kind of thermal hub or bowl where you have multiple drainages coming together. That's just gonna give that gobbler that advantage of being able to gobble in multiple different directions and cover a lot of ground with his vocalizations. The same holds true for saddles. So you're gonna to wanna to look for a saddle where this turkey can stand in the saddle and he can cover a lot of ground gobbling off either side of it. So when you look at either side of a saddle, you're gonna to wanna to look for big drainages on both sides of those saddles. Again, cause it's gonna give him the advantage of covering more ground. If you have a very, very small saddle, 
that doesn't have a very big drainage coming off of it, that's probably not gonna be the best spot, although you could find a turkey there. It's always important to remember that these are wild animals and they don't always do what we want them to do. You know, this can hold true in a lot of situations or it could be the total opposite in a lot of situations. When I really started paying attention to this, I started seeing and killing a lot more gobblers because I was able to predict where I thought they were gonna be. So this has actually helped me go in blind a lot of times, maybe to a, a wildlife management area, a national forest, maybe a lease that I haven't been to or a permission property where I'm going in blind, I can put myself in a spot before daylight where it's pretty likely there's gonna be some turkeys and there's probably gonna be some gobblers. I actually had a hunt last year where this worked out for me where I went and got on one ridge point over a thermal hub and at daylight, a turkey gobbled on the very next ridge point and I was able to call him to me without ever having to change trees. One reason that gobble zones are so good is because it's an area that turkeys like to spend a lot of time. He might not always be standing right there on that ridge point or in that saddle, but he's probably somewhere close around it and throughout the day, he's just kind of drifting around in there. This is where a tool like slope angle shading can actually make a big difference because you're gonna instantly be able to see where those steeper slopes are. And like I said, those make really good spots. So when you see that steeper terrain, that might be a spot to check out, especially if it's over the top of a large drainage or thermal hub. One of my favorite things about gobble zones and this style of hunting is that it can really be good any time of day. And I've had luck right off the roost. I've had luck at noon. I've had luck in the afternoons in spots like this. And even on quiet mornings, it's a good place to go just kind of slip in if they're not really gobbling good and just hang out. Like I said, they like to hang out in these areas and kind of just drift around. So you can sneak in there and sit down and wait and you can maybe hear some drumming you maybe hear some scratching, or maybe you could just catch that one or two gobbles that he gives you at 10.30 in the morning, you know, just walking around gobbling on his own, and you're already there in his bubble. We talk about on the podcast a lot, the more time you can spend around turkeys in close vicinity to them, the higher your chances are that you're gonna actually get to kill one. But that even means on a slow day where you slip into a gobbler zone, even if they're not talking very much, but you know they use this area a lot, if you can just hang out in there and kind of match their cadence, maybe you're being pretty quiet too and you're playing off whatever you hear them doing, that's where these areas have really come into play for me in the past is when I've actually slipped in there and just waited and then I get that one gobble at 9.30 and I can go make a play on him because I'm already very close to that turkey and I know about where he was when he gobbled. So when it comes to accessing one of these gobble zones, side hills are your best friend. You don't wanna be walking on the very top of a ridge. It doesn't matter if it's before daylight or if you're walking around mid morning, you don't wanna skyline yourself. Even with a, a flashlight before daylight, I don't like to do that. I like to get somewhere off the back side of the hill, kind of side hill and maybe in the middle of the hill, sometimes even in a bottom, and then come up to where I wanna be in elevation. But I don't like to be on the very, very top of a ridge when I'm accessing. Once you're able to strategically think about how the turkeys are using the terrain, for these gobble zones where they're putting themselves in a place where they can display themselves and be heard for a long ways off. You can also think strategically about how you're gonna move on those turkeys and get in a position that you can call them up to you on, especially in timbered hill country all across the Southeast. For more information on this topic, you can listen to episode 225 of the Southern Outdoorsman podcast to get even more details on this topic with Dr. Mike Chamberlain. Thanks guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next video from the Southern Outdoorsman.